What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. This is part two of um, James Wright versus Krishan. Uh, breakdown on her, on that case. Cassandra still with me. Say hey, Cassandra. C Jesus Christ. What it do, y'all? I'm going to call you Krishandra. <laughs> Krishandra. Yeah, so bad. But I'm not. But I'm just saying, that's what keep happening. Okay, let's get it. Those are two misdemeanors in the state of California. This is what they are going to be talking about this morning. All right, so it says arraignment and plea. So they need to, they're going to figure out what, what is going to happen. All right, so we all going to stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. um, as of right now, this is Oklahoma. So I don't want to go with that. All right, so in fact, right now, now, this morning, it's the people of the state of California against Krishan. All right. So she had a hearing at 830. That is the criminal side. As far as the civil side. Okay. This is the personal case. Okay. 111 in the chat. Wait a minute. So they had this, the hearing in the civil. Oh, so the civil side is going to happen on the 28th. Wait, hold on. Because I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. management oh ain't no telling i can't even read my own damn docket lord have mercy so, so this case was oh, yeah. So, uh -oh. yeah so this is the uh civil case and the civil case is gonna happen on the 28th yes i didn't see what was on that docket but something is gonna happen on the 28th sometimes it's not like a trial it could be a hearing for something but sometimes they do want to know the status of a case. Mm -hmm. And so Krishan or James don't have to be present. The attorneys will have to be present and just let the judge know how the case is coming along. Okay, good. Jesus Christ. Cause we know she don't like to show up to court. <laughs> Krishan. Um, let me ask you this. They said that she had to pay restitution. Um, clearly they didn't put how much restitution, but is restitution always what he is asking for okay so those are two different cases so on the criminal side mm -hmm. it was one of her conditions to pay him restitution mm -hmm. it's whatever the judge orders it mm -hmm. yeah so that's just an amount that the judge the judge could say you could pay him 300 a month or a thousand a month so how if for however long mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they put out the amount like publicly? Like I'm just, I'm asking because they put out everything else. Why, what would make them not put that out? Well, the, well, that's a very good question, but what I am assuming with California, unless you pay for the, the court docket to obtain the document, that's the only way that you're going to find it. Oh, okay. And that's something we will find out on the 28th. No, now the 28th, that's for the civil case. I thought the civil case yeah, is when so the he will want the money. Yes. Yeah. So here, okay. So the restitution is for the criminal case. So, you know, she was awarded probation for 12 months. Mm -hmm. And she also had to get one of her weapons. She can't uh, do some things. She has to pay restitution. All that is associated with the criminal. That has nothing to do with the civil case. The civil mm -hmm. case won't, let me see. It's going to be about a good three to six months, just depending on how far they go. They could settle at mediation. We never know, but it usually takes three months just to get to the discovery part. Okay, so we haven't even, oh, duh, we haven't gotten to the discovery because um, we haven't even really gotten into the civil part of the case. Well, we haven't gotten into the civil part of the case at all, actually. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Look at me learning it there. Okay. Back on February 6th. Okay. So civil so case, um, they issued a summons. So anytime a petition is filed in court, you have to give a, a copy of that petition to the other party. Now, as discussed in my prior lives, we talked about how they um, were, especially Oklahoma, was unable to locate Krishan. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in this civil case. They, they filed this petition, but it took them a while to get her served because they didn't know where to get her served at. All right. Now, this one does not have anything to do with criminal. No, 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 no. The, now, the state, that is different. This is criminal. 
And on the 27th of February, they put a warrant out. Okay. This is civil. Okay. On the 27th, that's my next question. They put a warrant out. I cannot remember when Krishan was supposed to have court for this James situation, but basically she didn't go to court for it either. That's correct. So that's why the warrant was out on the 27th of February because he failed to appear. So she had a warrant in Cali and a warrant in Oklahoma. What would possess Krishan, even if like you don't have guidance and shit, because I do feel like it helps. But common sense is very common when it comes to law. If you don't go to court, bro, boy, your ass is through. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> why why would yeah. she think that you're not about to get in trouble i don't understand that it, i know you can't it's answer that question i'm just talking <laughs> huh well no and i understand what you're saying but at the same time you do have people that think that they are above the law or they just think that they it's going to go away they don't really take the seriousness until something happens, just like this. You get locked up, and then everything is after you now. I think that that's stupid as hell. Like, and don't get me wrong, some people just not knowledgeable on certain things, but she done dealt with this enough to know. Or maybe the fact that she's just able to keep paying Oklahoma, like Oklahoma keep taking the money, you know what I'm saying, which we wasn't even aware of. Who knew she was actually paying Oklahoma, but... You're paying Oklahoma to to take that warrant back off, but they still give you a court date to show up, or they still tell you that you need to serve the the 120 hours of community service, and you still don't. It's almost like um, they kept slapping her on the wrist too, for real, Oklahoma. But let me tell you this: you sign an order. That order clearly stated, "I'm not giving you 30 days of jail time." You are going to get 120 hours of community service and you got to do it within six months and you're going to pay this fine. She signed off on it. All right. So you can, and your attorney explains it to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure they didn't be like, here, sign this. And she didn't read what it was or the attorney didn't tell her what it was. She clearly knew. They got to tell her by law, obviously. Even if he had to email that thing. <laughs> you going to get told that. That's so crazy. I completely understand why she didn't want to do the community service. Because I wouldn't either. But I would have had to do it. Or, like I said, I would have had to slide somebody else. I'm a thousand. Okay. Sign me, please. <laughs> uh, I didn't hear nothing. Nah, nah, I already know. I, you know, I don't even know. You don't even know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just like, <laughs> nope. but like, that's why I was saying yesterday, this ain't my situation. So I, of course, I'm not about to just, that ain't something that I'm promoting either, but it's clear she ain't going. She ain't going. <laughs> you know what I'm so it's like, golly. But anyway, all right. Well, we don't do warrants or anything of that nature. We just trying to get money. <laughs> all right. Um, Which so is Oklahoma. Krishan actually ended up being served on May 13th. So last month they was finally able to catch up with her and get her served. So now she has received a copy of the civil complaint stating that she is being sued for damages. So pretty much what James wants you to do is pay his medical bills and give him some money for pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, hearing, um, let's see, this is an order to show, show. Well, I don't think this has nothing. So failure to file proof of service. Mm. You know what? That's a whole nother problem, Cassandra. Cause Obviously, you're going to have to go through this. You you done got on probation again with L.A. So you on probation two times with two different states, which means you got to pay. And then you still owe the bail bondsman. So you still got to pay. No. No. Remember the bonds were exonerated. OK, I do remember in that. Oklahoma. Uh, well, let mm -hmm. me ask you this. How are they exonerated without? OK. How are they exonerated when the bail bondsmen had to pay? Well, okay, so the first time it was $50,000, and because she missed that, he had to pay. Right. So the next time she ended up getting another bail bondsman, it was double. Remember, it was a hundred k instead of fifty k. Right. And then when they got her the deferred sentence, 
they exonerated the bonds. So nobody had to pay anything. Got you. So the people that she owed 50000 to, she done paid them back. Well, I don't, that I don't know. Okay. I honestly don't know how that works. If the bail bond, I don't know if the bail bond, I really don't know. Okay. Okay. We can't <laughs> speak on what we don't know, friend. Okay. Okay. But in other see- words, though, she's exonerated of any bond. Okay. And, but now she has to still pay for her probation in Oklahoma. Uh, and clearly they're going to find her too. And then now she got to pay probation for LA. And then she may have to pay James. Well, she still got to pay James restitution because that's already been awarded, but that was awarded for the criminal part of it. So that's why I'm asking you. She's going to have to pay restitution for the criminal and the civil. Well, okay. So let's take out the terminology restitution for civil. Restitution is for the criminal portion. Okay. When it comes to the civil, it's going to be a settlement. Oh, so she would have to pay clearly a bigger amount. So instead of her, that's correct. Uh huh. So instead of her paying monthly, it's gonna be like, all right. He said that he needs you to pay his pet- medical bills, and he want a hundred thousand. Yes. Yeah, so pretty much what they have to do, like I said in the beginning, they have to uh, prove up their damages. That's how we say it. So his medical bills, whatever his medical bills are. They're going to demand three times that amount. Right. Okay. And then add in pain and suffering. Mm. So that could be the amount that they actually, when they filed the case, they asked for over 25,000. Oh, so it is an amount. Yes. So it could, well, no, it's not an amount, but it's an amount over 25,000. Mm-hmm. So, the, so it, hell, it could be a hundred k. It's given a hundred. It could be twenty five k. It's given a hundred. <laughs> I would <laughs> ask for a hundred too. Like, if you done, if if my teeth, if I had to get my teeth, whatever he had to do to get his teeth fixed or whatever, and then uh, whatever with the nose. First of all, medical bills you paying them regardless. And I I would have absolutely needed a hundred k. But if, for those that don't remember, in the beginning, I was telling y'all if I were her. I would have gladly paid him because I know I done dropped the ball. But I also would have let them know that they pissed me off. But I would have had to pay. And, of course, she ain't thinking like that. She went to the Internet and, you know, was bragging about, well, basically trying to make it clear that she didn't touch him. But in in out of arrogance because she knew she did, if that makes any sense. Like, that would that'll piss a person off when you know you did that, but you lying about you did not doing that. But I would have paid him. I would have paid him even if it was fifty thousand. He would have got some money because I know I done dropped the ball. You know, I think he actually did it for fame. For fame, I don't think he would have accepted Krishan's money up front. This right here gives him more exposure. Mm. Remember him with Patty Pie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, I didn't even get all into the Patty Pie situation. I didn't remember. I'm new, not true. I was reacting to YouTubers, girl. So I don't know if you know, but I was. So I wasn't necessarily all in that. So if you could give me a brief, what happened with that briefly? Oh, I honestly don't know because I didn't follow. I didn't. I didn't really too much care for James, so I didn't follow him really. But basically, but I'll look into that. Yeah, it, it was a clout move, basically. In general, just he wanted some clout from it and some money from whatever little accident that was. Cause I don't know how he could sue Patty LaBelle for her pies unless he acting like he made the pies originally. But you know, he, he was the dude that said Patty pies or he did some type of damn review. <laughs> oh my God. I got to see but that. I, I, I got to figure it out and I'll let you know. Okay. 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 See about this one. Because here it shows, oh, wait, 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 wait. So they served, wait, no, because I think they served her on the 7th. I need to do a bit more research. I know it was in May. It's between the 7th and the 13th, they served her. So just a little lesson. Anytime you serve, 
someone, whether you are using a personal um, a process server, the constable or sheriff, they have to complete an affidavit, which is known as a return of service, and they have to file that in court. I cannot express how important it is to file a return of service. If you fail to say like, so how can I say this? If you fail to file a return of service, that can cause the other party to file a motion to dismiss for failure to, um, yeah, it, 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 I could go down a whole rabbit hole with this, but it, it, you have to make sure that you do your due diligence. You have to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, especially when it comes to um, these litigated cases, because if somebody finds one little small discrepancy, that could just throw away the whole case. All right. Mm. So they're having a hearing on the 28th um, on failure to file the proof of service which is wild. I'm just, I'm going to keep updated on this to see how. Okay. So they, so on James side, they didn't file the proof of service. That's why it was a little concerning. Uh, I'm not concerning, confusing reading the actual docket because that's exactly what the hearing is for. But on the docket, it shows that they filed it. Okay. So I don't know if they filed it late, if it was completed incorrectly. I just don't know. This is almost like reading your Remanda rights. In a sense, because anytime you serve, well, anytime you file a lawsuit, you have to serve the other party. You have to let them know that you're suing them. Right. Okay. You remember when Chris Brown said Tamar looked like a, <laughs> I'm not reading that. Uh, Krishan should have left and had a diss track with Breezy. <laughs> this case goes. Because remember, Yo. this is the civil complaint, right versus Krishan. <laughs> so I really want to see what's going to happen, okay? Uh, but going into the complaint, going into the complaint. So our boy, he served Krishan um, on in May. And I want to hear now. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go down to this one. It is still the complaint, but it's just in a text form, which I, I prefer. And I'm going to see if I can. That's crazy. Hopefully I went to the to same right. I went to the same website because I was like, you know what? I'm sick of like having to look at everybody else's page to find these dockets and shit. I, I call myself wanting to be a little more educated on what I was talking about. <laughs> I went and seen all this text. I instantly got out of it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hell no. How am I supposed to read this? How do you read That's this? That's hilarious. <laughs> But like for real, how do you read this? But I feel like I need to skip this these part. This is unlimited twenty five thousand. So he's looking for. Okay. I've seen numbers and stuff. For twenty five thousand, like telephone numbers or more. Please note that just because he's asking for over twenty five thousand dollars does not necessarily mean that he's going to get that. He has to prove, you know, through medical bills and you know pain and suffering emotional distress all of that he has to pr prove that he has encountered all that and that his medical bills are that high to where he is awarded um that amount over now how you prove pain and suffering Twenty five thousand. what well, he would have to go like to a therapist or something yeah so anytime you're injured you have to you go to the I'm talking to my son. Mm. You got to go get checked out. That's the whole purpose of having medical bills. Mm. You cannot have a personal injury case without medical bills. Got you. And not just physical. It could also be mental too. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so you would have to go to a therapist. Okay. This is all starting to make sense now. There's a number of things that's going to happen, a number of plays that has to go on before they even get to trial. So since the complaint was filed, she's been served. The next thing that has to be done is that she has to answer to this lawsuit. If she does not answer, it can go into a default judgment. So I pray that Krishan does have an attorney. And that's response. You have so many days to respond. So a default judgment means they could just rule whatever he asking for. Hey, give me, give me about two seconds. I'm ordering some tacos. Oh, no, you fine. You go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. After you have been served, if you if you do not answer, y'all, she just picked up her son. She got to handle business, and I this was so last minute. So we appreciate her. She'll be back. <laughs> if your lawyer fails to answer, that can lead to a default judgment. 
and a default judgment is, you know, um, is, is good for the plaintiff. And that's not what you want, especially when it comes to uh, money. So I just hope that she gets an attorney and that they take care of this ASAP. Now, here's the thing. I have to look up to see exactly um, how many days she had to respond to the complaint. Because normally here in Texas, when we serve somebody, they have either 14 days or 20 days um, after the, ex how, how is it? So they have that Monday. So after 20 days, whatever falls on a Monday, they or 14 days, they have to respond by then. If not, then the plaintiff can move on or the other party can move on to a default judgment. So I just hope that she she does that. Um, so what charges, uh, not charges, I don't even want to say that, the causes of action. So he is suing her regarding assault, the battery, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Okay, so once again, he has the proof. Through intentional infliction of emotional distress. You know what? Y'all right. He, uh, he did do an interview recently and say he's traumatized and is having nightmares. That makes a lot of sense because <laughs> he got to make it seem like he just all fucked up. I understand. Medical records that he suffered injury and emotional distress. And I'm not going <clears> to <throat> spend all times on this. Uh, let's see. I'm just going down to the first cause of action, which was the assault against the defendant, Krishan Malone. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, And I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to make a sponsor. Everything to show on the screen. All right, so this is the first cause of action, which was assault. Now, keep in mind what we just read regarding the police report and the investigator report, okay? On or about November 11th at approximately 12.30 a.m., plaintiff and defendant were in one of the dressing rooms at the Novo, located at 800 West Olympic Los, uh, in Los Angeles when they became engaged in conversation. I'm just gonna put a note right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, did, did it happen on November 10th around 11 something or did it happen around November 11th? But that's neither. Well, it I was don't at say night. here nor there, but I'm just like, okay, can we get the, can we get the date? I think it's cause it was at night and like it was going from the 11 to the 12th or the 10th to the 11th. Time right. Uh, can we get the date? Uh, no. <laughs> oh no, that's not what it was. No. Well, it, it was just probably a couple of minutes off about 30 minutes. From the time, because in the report, it said that he approached them. He spoke with the victim around 11-ish. Mm -hmm. But now you're saying that he, the officers arrived at this time, the day after. I don't know if it was like midnight or after midnight. Mm, so they time was off. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Time right. Um, next thing I want to point out, it says when they became engaged in a conversation. Yeah. So I'm like, did you not become engaged with her? Cause you know, that police report that you filed the day after stated that, you know, you just walked in and you asked her something and then you turned around and started talking to somebody else. And then you turned back around and she punched you. Which one is it, buddy? Okay. Many who's which one During the short conversation, it, the defendant commented to plaintiff how nice he was and how different he was from everyone else at the event who had made, who had been mean to her. The defendant was crying and visibly upset because she stated everyone was lying about her not being where she was uh, supposed to be for her part of the performance. Plaintiff believes, and based on their own alleges that defendant was misinformed about her role that evening, as she was only supposed to participate in the ending of the concert performance called the twerk portion. Plaintiff believes, and based thereon, alleges that defendant thought she was supposed to have a larger performance role individually as a rap artist. Plaintiff tried to console defendant and confirm to defendant that she was not in the designated area, as everyone else said, because she would he would have seen her. Now, I just have so many questions in my head right now. Um, you didn't mention any of this in your report. Mm. So Krishan was just, I mean, yeah, so Krishan was just telling him how nice he was and everybody else was just being mean to her and she was crying and she was upset. Everybody was lying on her. Um, and then it says that he goes on to believe that she was misinformed about her role that evening. So Krishan thought she was there to perform. She was actually there for the twerk off. But he stated that he thinks that somehow, somewhere down the line, there was miscommunication. Can that hold up in court at all? Like, I, I mean, it, to me, it's given that Krishan just kind of got to take her L in that area, or am I tripping? 
it is just really how can I, if they go to trial that is something totally different but this case is really to prove up his damages so mm -hmm. it's not really anything with the criminal side it's really about you you're claiming all these damages mental suffering uh emotional damage all this uh can you prove that right all that other stuff is out the window when i do cases and i probably get a few cases that's dealing with personal injury and criminal mm -hmm. unless it's drunk and drunk driving mm -hmm. i really don't check for the criminal side of it mm. i need to see because somebody can say okay he punched me and knocked my teeth out but did you go to the doctor did you get everything, you know, did you get um, your teeth redid or whatever? How much did that cost? That's what I'm looking for. Right. And I, when they do prove that they did, if they prove that they did go to the doctor and shit like that, then what does that mean? Well, it all depends on what's said in the medical records. So the doctor really has to say, because of this incident, it really traumatized him blase 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 mm -hmm. so it's really what is stated in the medical records. if the medical records does not prove anything the the emotional distress the nightmares whatever the case may be mm -hmm. they're not going to pay for that mm. so he could just be wolfing on an interview that's correct but that's why i said we gotta see we definitely gotta see Okay. Um, he tried to console her, but he said, you wasn't in the area at that time. You wasn't near the stage because if you were, he would have seen you. Right. Defendant became upset with the plaintiff and stated that if he again said she was not where she was supposed to be, she was going to hit him. Plaintiff politely told defendant, I promise you, you are not on the side of the stage. Defendant immediately using the hand she was wearing, large champion style rings, struck plaintiff uh, several times in the face. Following the assault, while the defendant was removed, being removed from the dressing room and continued to shout foul, obscene, insulting language toward plaintiff such as, and you, you can see this, blank, blank ninja, I'll hit that mf -er again. All right, so now I'm going back to the report and it says that she just left the dressing room. Here in a civil complaint, it's saying that she was removed from the dressing room while shouting, all of all of you know all of that all right hmm and then the officer said when he watched the video he seen her ex he seen her exiting so which one so because if you're being removed that means that people are carrying you out or escorting you out well and he uh what's his name said he got out of the room rob he said everybody yeah, it's so many stories right that i feel like that type of shit shouldn't hold up in court either like if, if if the story not adding up, then what are we really talking about here? Hmm. Only heard something about I'll but hit him know, again. This is the silver side, right? Right. But yeah, all right. I see it. Say a number of people difference. of other people were in the dressing room who witnessed the assault against the plaintiff. The defendant intended to cause and did cause plaintiff to suffer apprehension of immediate harmful contact. All right, so that was the assault. Now, now for the second cause of action, battery. So they're pretty much saying that everything in the above paragraphs are true. Um, now, breaking down battery, the essential elements of a cause of action for battery are defendant touch plaintiff or cause plaintiff to be touched with the intent to harm or offend plaintiff. Plaintiff did not consent to the touching. Plaintiff was harmed or offended by a defendant's conduct and a reasonable person in plaintiff's position would have been offended by touching. Plaintiff alleges pursuant to the above acts defendant by defendant, defendant did commit a battery upon his person by striking him in the face several times. Plaintiff did not consent to defendant's actions as herein alleged. Due to defendant's offensive and deliberate act of striking plaintiff, plaintiff suffered two broken teeth. I thought it was just one, but two broken teeth, multiple lacerations. I thought it was just his nose and contusions to his face and nose, as well as emotional distress, according to proof at the time of trial. Plaintiff was seen at California hospital on an emergency basis following the incident, as well as a dental specialist and plastic surgeon to address the injuries he suffered as a result of the incident. 
as a direct and proximate, proximate result of the actions of defendant alleged herein, plaintiff has suffered extreme and severe emotional distress and that he is afraid for his safety and has limited his social and career gatherings as well as other damages in the amount not as yet as ascertained, but which exceeded the jurisdictional minimum of this court and will be proven at the time of trial. Now, I know that this paragraph sounds <laughs> a little extreme, but as a plaintiff, personal injury, paralegal, it could be just a scratch in your nose and I'm going to make it seem like... <laughs> It's stupid I'm gonna make it seem like it into was eighteen pieces. Bad. Okay. Um, that's just like one more one in the chat. Language that we we put in there. Um, but I do want to look at the part where he said he is afraid for his safety and has limited his social and career gatherings as well as other damage. Mister Wright, we seen you going out. You've been on live. <laughs> you've been talking to folks. You you're not fearing. Mister Wright, for your safety, sir, and you have not limited your social and career gatherings. That one is a bold-faced lie. <clears throat> Defendant did the action alleged here and with malice and, and with the intent. I mean, I think somebody was like, or he done learned with the Patty LaBelle case. <laughs> but somebody was like, just say anything. Just say anything. Sound like you are in fear. And it's so, it's so many people mad at me right now because they feel as though. If I think that people think that if, if he was a woman, I would treat it differently. And that's messed up because I didn't tell y'all to do that, nor did I ask y'all to do that. It's not whether it's a man or a woman. Like, bro, you, I just feel like you know when somebody's in fear or you know, I just, I can't even explain it because y'all going to feel how you feel regardless. But you know when somebody's in fear, bro. That woman ain't nowhere near where he is. She wouldn't even been at Tamar's show had Tamar not invited her. Nobody, not Krishan anyway, was like, I'm going to Tamar's show tonight. That was not going to happen. So outside of that, where are you really going to see her at? Like, and it don't have nothing to do with him being a man. If we're going to go size, you know, if we're going to go I would just say the bully in a situation because I would have to, I really have to watch what I say. I just feel like you really know when somebody's really in fear. And I just, I'm not, I'm not believing it. <laughs> I'm not believing it. I don't think that he's a bully either because somebody just said that in my comments. I don't think he's a bully, um, especially not physically. If anything, in court, he's trying to be a bully, but. I just don't feel that he's just, oh my God, I'm so scared. I don't, I don't believe that shit. I don't believe it. Into oppressive and cause him to suffer injury and that in the defendant harbored ill will towards plaintiff. Plaintiff is thus entitled to exemplary and punitive damages in the amount according to proof at trial. And that's when it says proof, that means he has to prove up his damages. Like you can't say I want a hundred thousand dollars, but your medical bills are only $15,000. You can't say that you, um, like you have to prove, okay. Not physically, but what do you call that mistreatment all night from them? That's what I'm saying. I feel like, like, everybody think we just over here like protect Krishan. No, y'all really treated that girl like she was nothing that night. We all sat there and watched it. So you know she felt it. It's no way she didn't feel it. So that's just one person. I'm talking about this was from a whole staff. A staff of people just kind of like, Mm, mm, everybody looking at her like she crazy. The only thing I really did not like was when Krishan was bothering that girl while she was singing. <laughs> like, I really wish she would have just kind of exited stage left. Cause what? Get move. <laughs> Why are you bothering? But you know what? Even the body language just from Tony is like when they were praying and Tony was like, I don't want you by me. Yes. You don't even have to like for signs. You could just, if that was just a random person, you'd be like, ooh, she must not like her or something. Something. It's because she didn't belong there, friend. She didn't belong there. If I walk up in a church right now where you only can wear skirts, guess what? Everybody going to look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I don't yeah. have on a skirt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you. 
I don't have on a skirt, so everybody gonna look at me like, why is this heathen walking in here with these pants on and looking like a man? That's kind of how she was treated. Like, look at this heathen coming in here. You know what I'm saying? I was just... Okay, sir, you're, you're saying that you don't go out no more, you don't do gatherings, so on and so forth. You, like, there's proof on the internet showing that you have. I also understand that she was really drunk and all over the place that night. But I just feel like the entire building, or excuse me, the entire staff didn't have to treat her like that in general. I would have been the one to take her in a corner and pro probably would have had to fight her because she would have been mad that I was trying to console her or whatever. But I would have been like, friend. But you, I'm about to say, you said something. And if y'all remember, James recalled that she was, what, on narcotics and drunk, right? Mm -hmm. If you know that, why would you go touch a person? I wouldn't have touched her ever. Or console them. Right. Wouldn't have touched her. But what I would have said, right, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> I you see that. You, you see everybody over here doing whatever it is that they doing. And if she would have took that the wrong way, we would have had to handle that. But all I'm saying is, None of them was thinking that, you know? Mm -hmm. Girl, it's just a mess. Nobody was on her side. She was in the wrong building. She shouldn't have never been there. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so if Krishan's attorneys get on this, they need to make sure that when it comes time for discovery, that y'all are requesting all of these. Y'all need to subpoena social media. Y'all have to. As a direct and proximate, res uh, proximate result of the defendant's misconduct, plaintiffs heard numerous physical injuries including facial lacerations and a ch chipped tooth. Now, just a second ago, you said there was two, but now it's just a chipped tooth. A plaintiff has also suffered extreme mental anguish, severe emotional stress, as well as physical pain and suffering. As a direct and proximate result of defendant's conduct, plaintiff was required to obtain medical services and treatment in the amount according to proof, proof, of tri proof at trial and will in the future be compelled to incur additional obligations for medical treatment in the amount according to proof at trial. So that is pretty much saying that he had to, so for his injuries, he did have to seek medical services and treatment in which he has to prove up those bills. But then it's also saying that he may incur additional treatments, um, but he still has live proof at trial. So it's not something where, okay, I'm going to sue for 50,000, I'm going to get 50,000. No, you still have to prove up everything, your medical bills, your suffering, emotional distress, all of that. Um, Huh. As a further direct and proximate result, proximate result of defendant's conduct, plaintiff was unable to work for a period of three weeks and accordingly lost wages in the amount according to proof at trial. So he is going to have to provide documentation showing that he was unable to work for three weeks. Now, normally what I do is when I have a plaintiff and they, they tell me that they're unable to work, I always ask them, do you have medical documentation or is there anything in your medical records showing that you were unable to work? Number two, I'm going to have them submit a wage loss form, which means that they have to give a form to their uh, employer. They have to complete and say, yes, this person, um, uh, you know, uh, was unable to work because they submitted medical documentation and so on and so forth. Now, I know James is an entertainer, so it's going to be kind of different for him. Um, so I'm not sure. Not somebody in the comments. <laughs> I got beat up by my ex and went to work the same day. <laughs> First of all, friend, you shouldn't have went to work. But that's crazy. Thank you, Hazel. I wouldn't have went to work the same day, friend, because I would have been in jail. Or exactly what type of documentation he would show in that nature. But we just will oh, have your to see. But either sense. way, <laughs> I'm going after medical records. Did a doctor say that you were unable to work? All right. Now, that leads us to our third cause of action, um, stating intentional infliction of emotional distress against defendant. So pretty much everything in the past two causes of action, what they are just saying is true. Um, and then going into this one, it says, as a direct and pro proximate result of the actions of defendant, as alleged herein, plaintiff has suffered extreme emotional distress, including but not limited to severe humil humiliation, mental anguish, and emotional and physical distress, and has been injured in mind and body in the amount not yet ascertained, but will be proven at the time of trial. Once again, going back to, to what I request my clients, uh, our clients, I should say our clients, the attorney's clients. Well, I, they're my clients too, because I'm the one that talked to them and do all the work. Who has to um write these? Who who makes these? Makes what? These um reports, like what you're reading from. Uh, this is a complaint. So the paralegals actually do this. <laughs> 
Oh my Unless god. Unless it's a solo practitioner. <laughs> That's so crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> so my clients, so what I always tell them, all right, if you suffered any mental anguish, any emotional distress, do you have documentation? Did you go see a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or anybody? Did you go to therapy? If you have that, give me that documentation or let me request that documentation. So that way this helps build your case. So he has to show some type of documentation showing that he suffered mental anguish, emotional distress. Now the severe humiliation. Damn, I'm in order to suffer mental anguish, you got to go see a damn therapist first. So you got to go find a therapist, pay for the therapist, all kind of shit. That's crazy. Yeah, it, and so a lot of people don't realize well, this is a different case because um, I'm thinking about somebody suing somebody versus a car wreck or slip and fall. But they may have health insurance that they can use to go see a psychiatrist. And usually the attorney firm will, uh, what did you call it, refer them to a mental health specialist or somebody. This somebody that can give you a, a initial evaluation and they can reuse that right there. They don't even gotta go to that many times for a treatment or a visit. They can go one time and we use that. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I'm sorry, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not sure how you would prove that. Tacos, okay, bust them down. But if they see that you're going out the next day or, you know, the next couple of days or you're out with your daughters and stuff like that, hmm, I don't know, it's questionable. Defendant knew that her aforementioned conduct would cause plaintiff to suffer extreme emotional distress, yet she proceeded and with said conduct with full knowledge and forethought of what the consequences of their actions would be and acted with reckless disregard for the uh, probability that plaintiff would suffer extreme emotional distress. Defendant's conduct was intended to and did in fact cause plaintiff to suffer extreme emotional distress, further it with very substantial uh, substantial factor in causing the severe emotional distress suffered and still being currently suffered by plaintiff. Said conduct will willful, malice, oppressive, despicable, and with conscious disregard of plaintiff's rights and with the intent to vex, annoy, harass, and injure plaintiff. Therefore, plaintiff is entitled to recover exemplary and punitive damages in the amount according to proof at the time of trial. Wherefore, pra uh, plaintiff prays for judgment against the supposed to be defendant, and each of them as follows. So this is what they are. So for each cause of action, they are asking the court to grant them this. So for the first cause of action, which is the assault, they're asking for general damages in the amount according to proof at trial, medical and related expenses in the amount, past and future loss of earnings, impairment of earning capacity, punitive and exemplary damages, cost of suits herein. So, you know, any fees that he has to spend on lawyers, court costs, all that good stuff. Um, or the battery charged, once again, general damages, medical and related expenses, past and future loss of earnings, impairment, punitive and exemplary damages, um, and the same for the third cause of action with the infliction of emotional distress. So he's he's pretty much asking for each cause of action to be, uh, action to be granted um, or awarded, awarded money. He wants a settlement. He wants a settlement. Um, so that, that, that is the actual uh, civil complaint. That is this nigga want a bag. I think we went through all of this to realize he just wanted the money. And to be honest, I ain't mad at him for it. I still feel as though something should be. <sighs> he should, he shouldn't have never touched her. A consoler, got nearer, nothing. Because it seems as though after that happened, when she said, when he said whatever he said, she was close enough to hit him in the face. It's given he was close enough to be hit in the face. So he was too close to her. I just, I just, a lot of shit. I, I disagree with. I disagree with a lot of this. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. And here's the thing. So if before they go to trial, they do have an opportunity to settle. I honestly think that he may get something. Uh, but if they go to trial and she has a good lawyer, they may fight it and he might end up with anything. Child, she ain't going so to trial. Who knows? If Krishan got the money to spend it, she gonna go ahead and get out of the way. 
She don't want to go to court anyway. She do not like court. Which would be a good if she, so mediation is gonna be her best bet. She better get it out the way. She better take it very seriously too. Child, we can't make yep. it, but she better figure it out. <laughs> that is the civil complaint um, that was filed by um, your boy. Uh, let's see. Now, as you can see, as of right now, she does not have any attorneys, attorneys for her civil case. A lot of people ask, well, well, can the criminal attorney do? No. Y'all have to understand that there are different laws, different area of laws, unless that uh, lawyer also handles personal. But that's not. You don't really find that unless it is a smaller firm that handles a lot of areas of law. So I've had, I have the opportunity to work solely with a personal injury firm, which is a much larger firm, but I also have the opportunity to work for solo practitioners that actually do criminal law, wrongful death, personal injury, so on and so forth. Somebody told her as to plead the fifth. I don't know who, but somebody told her to plead the fifth. <laughs> Cause ain't no way she knew not cause she's, you know, not educated or anything, but I mean, nobody's going into court to represent themselves and be like, and and don't know anything about law. Barely go to court in the first place and just be like, yeah, I'm about to plead the fifth. <clears throat> Somebody talked to her. Maybe it was the inmates. Maybe they was like, listen, t tell them you plead the fifth. Something happened. And why wasn't a um? Why does she not have a public defender? Is that not always appointed to you or something? All right. So only in criminal cases can you have a public defender. You cannot have that in a civil case. Also, a civil case, you go back and forth by yourself. I mean, you have to have a lawyer. No, well, Nick, I'll take that back. You can be self-represented in a civil case. But what happens is they will hire paralegals like me. Mm. And I'll work the case from behind and produce the documents that they need to produce to the court. So she could do that, but, and I don't know if I explained it in this video, but even though they served her, she needs to answer. If she does not answer to that complaint, it's going to be a default judgment. Mm. Mm-hmm. You said that. I, that's actually what I was trying to ask you when you was ordering a taco. I was saying, what do you oh, mean yeah, by default? Okay. <laughs> you made me want one. But by default, that means that they get granted whatever, right? That is correct. Yeah. But it is harder in a personal injury case to get a default judgment only because you have to still prove up your damages to the judge. So you can't say I'm, you know, I'm suing for a hundred K and you get a hundred K because she never responded. You still have to prove up your damages. Mm. This is a mess. So just because she has it. a lawyer in the criminal case, they may not be able to do personal injury law because personal injury law, that is a task in itself mm. as well as criminal law. <laughs> But I see smaller firms doing it because it generates revenue. But to just go back to the matter at hand, for the civil case, she does not have an attorney. Okay? Now, let me see. Does she have... Now, for her, her criminal case, she has an attorney. But for her civil case, she does not have an attorney. Yeah. Um, Why can't she use the same one? Because when they said they have a meeting or hearing on... Because he may not know what he's talking about. Yeah, it just all depends. If that attorney actually uh, covers personal injury, then he can. But that's more money. Mm. The citation yeah, for you failing got to... <laughs> I mean, my head hurt. This is a lot. It's like... Clearly, I didn't know the difference between... Um, well, excuse me, let me not say that it sounds stupid, but who knew what, what you did with personal, like, I don't, not too many people dealing that I know is dealing with a personal case or, um, what did you call that case? Like 
If somebody was touched. A personal on, injury? Yeah, personal injury case. I don't know too many people that's dealing with that. You know what I'm saying? So who knew it was a hell of a difference? Or you, you could have a public defender with this, but not a public defender with that. In that situation, you got to present yourself, whatever. This is a lot. This is a lot. And that's my point. I can only imagine. She don't know none of this. <laughs> none of this. <sighs> how much? How much? Ooh, I want to answer a question in the chat. Go ahead. Uh, it says, does she need to respond prior to the hearing? So for civil cases, you have an expiration date. So once you're served, it may be 14 days. I think California has a 21 day summons. So you have to file your answer in court within that 21 days. Now, it does not have to be by an attorney. She can even write on a piece of paper <laughs> or mm. email or call somebody and tell them to do it on her behalf and send it to the court and that will count as an answer. Wait, she can't answer in jail? I mean, she can if she gets somebody give her a piece of paper mm. and she write and say, I received a copy of the petition that was served to me. Mm. I mean, I I thought that that would count them knowing that they served her. I guess that don't matter. Clearly, that does not no, matter. No, so that's different. So you, ha so you have to be served. But the person, the defendant has to respond confirming that they got the petition and they understand that they're being sued. Hmm. And if the person doesn't respond, then that's when they could go into default. That is correct. A default judgment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm learning the thing at 15. Okay. Two. I don't know how much you're going to say after this. It's only three mm -hmm. minutes left. How you serve address? Oh, four minutes. I serve. Okay. okay. I personally delivered the documents and I'm two on. Okay. She was actually served on May 4th at 5 p.m. Oh, I don't want to show his process server because in Texas we have to redact the process server information. All right. So she was actually served on the 4th of May, which means, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure, but. I think the expiration for answering to this uh, petition has, has gone out the window, but mm. we shall see. All right. God so that's May 15th, May 13th. Okay. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated on, on that part. Um, but I just wanted to stop sharing. Uh, so I did want to just kind of bring this to your attention when it comes to the civil side of things uh yes we know that she is going through the criminal portion right now that's the reason why she's in custody but we still have to keep in mind that she is still going through the civil case uh, and it is important that she answers you know I, I'm not, well it doesn't show that she answered yet and it doesn't show that she has an attorney so my from my experience doing this when you don't answer it automatically goes into default judgment even if you're in jail Yep. Dang. <laughs> I literally. Uh, hold on. I need to find this right quick. Oh, let me let this shit finish. But they still have to provide the medical bills, the medical records. That's crazy. How would she even? She would know because she got served. Mm. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, to prove, uh, so you can't. Say if people were saying she got served at her game, so everybody see you get served, you can't say that you didn't get served. Mm -hmm. And on the summons, it tells you you have to respond by, and it gives a date. Cha. I am just, this a lot the damages and they still have to present that to the judge for review and it's going to be up to the judge to say okay you know yes this is a default judgment because she failed to respond but looking at your you know medical records your medical bills um we can grant you this and that's normally how that works um now i'm not sure how california does it but i know in texas 
once you get a judgment that goes on your record and you have to pay the judgment off. So it's, it does hinder you if you want to go, you know, get buy a house or buy a car, um, go get a credit card. If you have a judgment on your record, that will stop you from doing a lot of stuff. That's just like with Blueface with that $13 million um, judgment that he has. OK, so this is not the route that you want to go. So if y'all can get word out to Krishan, tell her to at least, you know, write on a piece of paper. I received the complaint <laughs> and, and send that in. And that can, con you know, constitute for her, um, her answer just to respond. But you never want anything to go with a default judgment. That's mm -hmm. not the route that you want to go. But, you know, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that this was um, an insightful video for you guys. I'm it was great for me. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. We appreciate you. Uh, Cassandra, this is just a mess. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Thank y'all for having me. Okay, y'all make sure y'all subscribe. And that's all I got. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah.